This is Regain Wellness Podcast with Jamie Logie, episode 164. Today we're talking about F45 Fitness. Here we go, pivot! 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 Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jamie Logie. I run RegainWellness.com. This is Regain Wellness Podcast. Thanks for making it on out here today, wherever you are. And if you're new here, extra special welcome. If you haven't, or if you are new and you haven't already or whatever, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. That way you get them automatically sent to you. And you can check out all the old episodes. I've got over, what's this, over 160 of them now covering everything you could think of, amazing guests, all sorts of stuff. And you get it, you know, wherever you find podcasts, probably Apple Podcasts or iTunes, but all those other ones too, like Stitcher Radio or iHeartRadio, Google Play, <clears throat> if anyone even uses those. But um, they're all there. So today's show is about F45 Fitness, which you may or may not know of. And to me, it's, I don't know, I think the best of all the sort of chain-based commercial fitness gyms or whatever you want to call them approaches um kind of new you know fitness dynamic like there, there's a lot of different ones out there that i'll get into but it's one that i've seen as i think one of the more effective approaches in that it's taking the right approach it's taking kind of the right mindset and the right you know program designing um, community aspect, all that sort of stuff. So if this is something, you know, at 45, like it's getting bigger everywhere. You might, if you've not heard of it or have no access, there's still like information in the show that's relevant as far as the style of training, why it's so effective and like how you can incorporate it in too. So if you're already like part of one of these, you're very well aware if it, if it's something that's, you know, not exactly, applicable the information regarding like how it is effective is applicable so hopefully i'll cover everything and give you a little more insight okay let's go so there are there's just there's a lot of options out there now it's a good time to be fit and a consumer because there's a lot of places just vying for your money and i did an episode on what the best gym or fitness option for you might be. And I'll link that up. If you want to check the show notes today, so regainwellness.com slash one six four. And I'll have like any other relevant episodes or information. So based on that show is like I did a breakdown of all the different gyms and kind of what's the best bang for your buck and sort of covered everything from high end gyms to like CrossFit to personal training studios and the pros and cons of each. But like I said, it's a good time to be a fitness consumer because there's so much available and is like it's not that fitness has not always been relevant and at the forefront, but it, it seems even more so now. And I don't know if that's more of the rise of uh, information and knowledge and people's ability to share that through, you know, TV, websites, social media, Instagram. People are like a little more in tune and they're maybe more motivated they're, you know, they're seeing what's available and what, you know, they can achieve through fitness and health and everything like that. So, you know, right now it's funny, like I find that regular old school, just normal gyms are, it's not like they're falling by the wayside, but there'd be like gyms everywhere now, just, you know, regular gyms that have, you know, big cardio areas with TVs, free weights, um, strength training equipment, machines, you know what I mean? like they're so affordable now. Like there's, there's so many that are like 10 bucks a month or five, you know, five or $6, you know, like I, amazingly affordable. And, and it's incredible that they're still able to compete when, well, maybe, I mean, that's sort of the business model is that they're trying to make it like a no brainer and taking people away from other more expensive options. Or if they just want, you know, some of these gyms have no staff and like there's no towel service or, showers or amenities or anything like that. But then some people do want those things. So they'll play, they'll pay a higher 
premium for it. And I think they're trying to recruit away those people who don't want to be overwhelmed. They don't want to, um, they want just like a three day a week workout. They just want to do like 30 minutes or walk on a treadmill, which is all awesome. And as long as people are moving, I think that's the main thing. But like with the other options out there, as far as what's popular, say CrossFit, obviously the biggest thing in the last five to 10 years. And I'd be interested if that, that'll still be, some, I think it will be like within 10 years. I thought it might fall by the wayside a little bit too, but it, it's got such a big community and sort of network. And as, and as far as more of a mainstream approach, like everyone knows CrossFit and it's, you know, the CrossFit games and it's kind of, you know, gone into that direction. They almost like mix it up with like Spartan races or American Ninja Warriors, kind of like in that realm, but again, not for everyone. And I got, I have an episode all on sort of pros and cons of CrossFit, if that's something you're thinking about. So I'll link that one up in the show notes. And so as well after, you know, like there's, like I said, there's personal training studios that it's, you just go in there to train with a trainer and that's it. You don't use it any other time. There's yoga studios. There's like orange fitness. There's um, Soul Cycle, and then other variations of spin based. Um, I was just in New York. What's the one on? Uh, they're all over the city as well. Um, crap, I can't remember. There's one in like the Flatiron. So it's like whatever. There's sort of offshoots of the same idea, and you know that high intensity spinning type class. And I've even seen these for like rowing based classes. So they they set up like the ergs, like the rowing machines, and you do the same thing like that. And then there's more. Um, you know, MMA, UFC based gyms and then there are training centers or whatever you want to call them. And then there's a lot of high intensity kind of, you know, hit training gyms that they're privately owned. They're not part of a, a specific network. And you've probably seen them. I mean, there's a ton around in my city that have various names and they're really good. And I've trained at some of them and they all sort of encompass this high intensity interval training um, sort of circuit based principle and that's what f45 is about too and it's though to me like it's it the things exploded in the last um i'd say two years you know two to three years and they're everywhere and it's like in my city they just got one which i thought would be a while off and you know so like bigger and bigger areas and cities and out of australia so i'll go more into the background of it but like i said that's um, you know, with all the other different <clears throat> variations of fitness out there, F45 to me is one of the big, big players. And you can see that through its, you know, kind of rapid expansion and growth. So with F45, it, stay, it stands for functional 45, and it's based around functional um, training and interval training and cardio and strength training and, you know, everything sort of put together. And it's based, it originated in Australia. And like I said, it's grown at this sort of rapid pace. So right now there's, there's, I think like 350 franchises came up just in the last two years or two and a half years, just through the U.S. And apparently right now they're selling 30 to 50 franchises a month, which is crazy big. And so it helped that like, you know, early on, I mean, again, it's not even that old. It, celebrities were involved, which is never a bad thing as far as getting you out of the gate pretty quick it can sometimes be a bit of a detriment because uh, you know when celebrities are involved not not involved but not even endorsed but connected to something it's got that little bit of a fad undertone under it because celebrities and their fickle nature can kind of move on to other things really quick so people sort of jump on board until they see someone else promoting it or if that person moves on so i mean that can be a, a pro or con, depending how you look at it. But celebrity-wise, Hugh Jackman was really big, you know, in that Australian connection. Even, like, Cardi B was big and really, you know, brought attention to it social media-wise. Um, so, you know, not not a bad thing, ultimately, I'd say, in this case. So, whereas I mentioned there's a lot of, you know, hit-style training gyms, the thing with F45 is that it really embraces technology. And it's that's kind of, you know, in conjunction with that functional training. And so as far as like what to expect, if you've ever done that type of training before, like HIIT training, high intensity interval training, you're familiar with how, um, you know, exhausting it can be, but invigorating and all the results that can come from it, which I'll get to in a bit. And so with F45, you're looking at sort of a 45 minute session based on 
functional training. So the idea is like, you know, all the studios, whichever part of the world you're in, they offer the same, that 45 minute high intensity circuit based class for the studio members. Um, so, you know, according to F45, they, they define like functional exercises are use of like your full body, multiple muscle groups. And this type of training is ideal towards, you know, building lean muscle, um, strength, but things that, you know, strength and, and fitness that you can use in your everyday life. And so motions being like lifting, squatting, jumping, twisting, uh, there's pulling and pushing, you're punching, you're kicking, you're rowing, you're biking, a- everything that you could possibly do on a day-to-day basis or that that could help enrich and improve your life is going to be involved in there compared to like, uh, you know, say you're doing, and, and these are all still effective, but say you're just, do, you know, doing normal bench presses and whatever, they don't necessarily, it, it's important for strength and muscle development. Yeah. But it's not as much of a functional movement where, you know, an exercise that you can do in the gym that can help mimic, like, you know, picking up your kid, you know, cause you're down and you're twisting or moving boxes out of a car. You know what I mean? So like some old school exercises are maybe not the best as far as functionality. And that's the big advantage that you get with um, F45 training. So, so why is it 45 minutes? So with that fix, you know, 45 minute, time period that's you know the duration of the workout it, it's said to provide you know a good timing structure to um, you know maximize members growth and progress it's not too much to just destroy you but not too little that you're not feeling like it was fully effective so there's different daily workouts you know if you know crossfit there's like workout of the day the wod's but like with that 45 there's each daily workout varies the number of exercise stations uh, the work time and the rest time ratio. So, it, oh, and also like the number of repetitions through the circuit on that day. So there's so many different variations that you can do that it's never necessarily the same. It's always like going to be changing. And that's good, not just to sort of keep your interest, but for your body to keep your body guessing because your body can get very complacent very quick and it wants to figure out the easiest way to do something. So if you've been doing the same workout, Um, constantly for six months after a while your body's not surprised anymore knows exactly what's going to be coming and it learns how to do that with the least amount of energy or muscle use as possible so a a workout program that was originally um, effective will will taper off over time and that's why variation is so important and I did a whole episode on why you want variation in your workout so I'll link that one up as too there'll be a lot of homework after this one if you want to listen to so regainwellness.com slash 164. And so I break down how you can, simple things you can do to change variation. So to keep your body guessing, and then that's when you get better results and better strength and fitness and everything like that. So with F45, yeah, it's always changing. Um, you know, and then also giving you like a super challenging workout for that day. So it's been interesting the more um, I've looked into this. And actually like, at the moment, when I was um, diving a little deeper, there's 1,300 franchises around the world right now, and and it's constantly growing, and the programs are growing. So, like I mentioned, there's you know all these different variations of workouts and names, and at the moment, I mean, and obviously this is changing. There's 27 different 45 minute workouts that F45 uh, provides. So the creating this whole brand and, and this movement, um, it basically came from the creator, his, his desire to, you know, create a group training facility that was using, you know, the most dynamic and effective training styles uh, at the moment. And so it's not just that, like, not only was he looking to find the best type of workouts, but he wanted to make those um, be able to be so changed up and variable that it makes them more accessible to people. So, you know, you might not be able to say handle a lot of weight or do like say in CrossFit, it's a very technical based workout with a lot of like Olympic lifting and cleans that take a lot of skill and strategy. Uh, Like it can take years to honestly perfect this stuff. Like I do a lot of um, Olympic lifting and, and I'm still like never happy with where it is. I always feel like you can get better. So with F45, it's a little more accessible. Like I said, it's more of those functional movements. 
you know, like the pulling, the pushing, the twisting, the jumping, all that sort of stuff. So with the creators, they're looking at a lot of those different fitness models, um, you know, and a lot of, you know, sport based training and, and how you can kind of put those together to get results. So like I mentioned, you, you see there's people signing up for normal gym memberships. And the problem is they're, you know, they're coming. I think the average is people go like once a month um, to to their gym. And I think it's like 30 percent of all gym um, members are, are actually using it on a consistent basis. And that means three to five times a week. And gyms are banking on that. If you went into if you're a part of a gym, if you went into your gym and every person that's a member there showed up, you wouldn't even be able to turn sideways. And that it, that's the sad part of the gyms is they know that 70% of the people are very rarely going to use it. So they can sell memberships out the wazoo knowing overcrowding is not really going to be an issue. So with the creators of F45, that's what they saw is like people just weren't motivated to go. Um, you know, people are, you know, obviously people have been getting results with gyms, but it was, you know, maybe with personal trainers and then they're paying, you know, $70 a session and three times a week and it's costing a lot. So, F45 was built somewhere in between that normal um, gym goer who's going, you know, once a month and the person paying for personal training three times a week. And with that, they've been able to get a better clientele and more of a like sort of rabid fan base of people being able to stick with it and, um, you know, thrive off it. So they're, they're, the pillars of the business are built on uh, three things. They say motivation, innovation, and results. And, you know, at the time they were seeing team training was exploding and that, you know, that's one of the big um, appeals of CrossFit and other hit training gyms, which, and these have always existed from aerobics classes back to the eighties and seven and whatever. Uh, people just like that idea of team training and, you know, just wanting to go with your friends or meet new people and have it be a social aspect. And that I think is one of the big and effective things that can help you or anyone just in health and fitness survive it and, and, and thrive off it is that is having a buddy system, feeling a part of a team. People want that. That's really, you know, maybe running clubs or squash clubs or social people want that support and that network. And even just to being like, um, accountable to someone. If you have a workout buddy and you not feel like showing up, you know there's someone waiting for you um, and going to keep you in check or you're letting that person down. And accountability is one of the biggest drivers of fitness and health, whether it's someone in person or your family or even like online communities are massive for that or Facebook groups where people, I mean, that's why Weight Watchers is such a successful thing because there's that accountability factor and that really helps drive results, even almost like independent of what you're specifically doing, as long as you're doing something. So ask, you know, if you know anyone who's done F45, um, ask them. That's, that's what makes it special. People feel very like part of a very unique community and that's what gets them coming back for, um, months and months. I mean, because it is still relatively new, but people are, are showing more of a commitment as far as doing at least three or three to six months um, even two to three years in the same workout studio, which is not normal for fitness. They've really set it up as kind of like your one-stop shop for all things fitness because you're getting everything like cardio and resistance training. And then on certain days, they're, yeah, they're more cardio-based. Some days are more resistance strength training-based and comedy. But basically, you have everything there compared to, you know, no offense to like some regular boot camp based class where you're only getting that circuit or cardio training and not, you know, specific resistance training or like orange theory fitness or soul cycle, like all great, but like, they're just limited to those workouts. Like if you want, you know, soul cycle is crazy expensive, but say you wanted to do just some regular strength training, you have to have another gym membership. So that's a massive pain and a lot of money. Cause a lot of these things aren't cheap. So with F45, I sound like I'm totally endorsing this, but I'm not, I have no connection to F45, but, um, I've just seen how good it is. And, um, th like I said, it, it's an all encompassing based gym. The other thing that sets it apart too, like I said, is that how it's innovative and its use of technology. It's not only is it 
you know, it's a combination of all these things. So it's a really good whole body workout. You've got that community aspect. You've got that variation that's always changing. But one of the big things that they think is really behind all the growth is the technology. And, you know, obviously the world's changing. Everyone's a lot more tech savvy. Tech savvy. And with F45, they want to reflect that in the training. And they, they use the tech to be sort of encompassing. And, you know, it, it's something people like to be able to track stuff. And that's why um, step counters and Fitbits and wearable technology is so big. People just like to see where they're at. So a lot of the so what F45 does that a lot of hit and boot camp style studios don't is they have these big, large like monitors and displays that are set up uh, like up on walls. And they're the guide members through the workout in case you know, if you get lost or confused or you're like really run down, you can check and know right where you're at or where you're supposed to be, which people really appreciate because a lot of people to the gym training, it's intimidating. They don't want to look stupid. They don't remember, but like with all these monitors, they know exactly where they're supposed to be. And so not only do they provide the members, you know, with a more kind of organized, um, kind of like set by set station by station diagram for the workouts, but um, they also, you know, it means the, the clients and the people are doing the exercises in the correct technique. Um, it shows previews of how they should be completed. It Essentially, it's taking all the, the guesswork out of it. Um, and then, you know, with the screens, they can always, it allows them to always change the timing, change the exercises, change the way the members move around the room all the time. So it, it they really um, connect the technology and make it very innovative um, and very um, progressive for everything. Like with that technology, and I, I guarantee um, there'll be other offshoots and sort of, I don't want to say like watered down versions of F45, but like whenever anything is successful, you'll see, I hate saying knockoff version because in the case of fitness, it's, I mean, they're basically, you know, embracing the model. So with it, and you'll see more gyms using this technology. I've, I've worked out a few of these, um, just cause they're available. Like I've had multiple different gym memberships and I'll have those odd, um, you know, $10 a month, uh, gyms. Like in, in the States there's planet fitness or planet, whatever they call it. Um, and that, and there's some in Canada where I'm at where they're sort of jumping on the bandwagon with this. So what they do is, and because it's like, there's no trainers there, there's no staff, whatever. So they set up these workout areas and it's set up with timers and some screens and sort of walks them through the workout. So it'll say, do five minutes on a treadmill or cross trainer, another five minutes on a bike as a warm up, And then you work your way through the strength training equipment. And it's just the normal stuff you know, like a leg press, a leg extension, hamstring curl, shoulder press, the usual stuff like that. But it's got a, a countdown timer. So you see how long you're supposed to be on it. And it interestingly, it uses a 45 second timer, which is a kind of an ideal um, range for a set. If you're, if you're working out and you're doing a set of say 10 repetitions and you crank that thing out in like 12 seconds, it's probably not enough uh, time under tension for your muscles to to get stronger and bigger. You want to be looking at anywhere from at least 30 seconds to around 45. And that's why the, the repetitions are kind of irrelevant and even the weight's sort of irrelevant. It's more about that keeping the muscle working through that whole time and ideally hitting sort of a failure point, maybe around like a 10 or 12 rep range, depending on what you're going for. That's for you know general fitness, strength, muscle building. So the the clock and the timer and just in these basic little gyms I'm talking about um, counts down so they can see how long they've got to be going so they don't finish early or go too long. Then they move on to the next one and there's like a little beeper indicator knowing where to move. So I find, you know, it's already starting to um, evolve in these other gyms and then they're using uh, this other one I use sometimes. They have this sort of uh, fitness aerobics room, which, which is kind of small. And there's a huge screen in there. And then you can pick different workouts where someone's guiding you through it, which, you know, it's kind of normal, hasn't been done before, but they're using it. And the same place has a little spin room where there's a huge screen and you can watch um, guided instructional like spin classes or there's a big um, you're watching like a sort of live feed of people biking down the coast and you're following it as well true and that's where those um what are they called peloton peloton or peloton the bikes 
at that you have at home where they have the monitor and so you can follow live classes wherever they are around the world, whether they're um, pre-recorded or you're following a live one. They're those things are super expensive, but again, you know these these places are embracing the technology. So with F forty five, there's a few different stages that kind of use um, the technology. So the first one is that you basically book yourself into a class um, through an F45 app that you have on your phone. Then the second sort of stage of the technology is that, you know, members turn up at the session and their heart rate tracking um, the technologies on the phone pop up on the screens through, it's called uh, Lionheart. And it that's their own brand. It's like a heart strap monitor as soon as you walk in. So it's tracking your heart rate so you can see it. Um, and and it, they basically, it's like a Bluetooth connected thing. It basically automatically recognizes you. So you don't even have to do anything. It's just ready to go. So the third stage of the technology is the automated feedback the members receive um, through a PDF file in your email once, as soon as they, basically as soon as you complete the session. And it gives you um, how many F45 points you have, you know, like how, how you scored your average heart rate during the workout, how many calories you burn. So again, a lot of information and a lot of tracking. And then there's the one step further, which is kind of the fourth stage of the technology. And it's an app and it's called the F45 Challenge. So that takes members focus on fitness kind of uh, and kicks it up a bunch. So it tells you uh, the appropriate nutrition to fuel the F45 workout. It's a shopping list required for that it's got menu planned. It's got food tracking, um, basically to just help make fitness and health a complete lifestyle. And that I, that's really what it, it you know works with F forty five is is being a real lifestyle brand. And I really think they're achieving that well. I'd say CrossFit done has done that really well too. That they've made it a real lifestyle brand. And F forty five I think is is surpassed that and is continuing to do it even more. So they're and, and really they're only the brand they're the only brand that's been doing it to this extent of like, you know, what to eat, how to train, heart rate tracking, workout tracking, calorie burning. And I think they've like almost like perfected this model. And like I said, I think you'll see this grow uh, through a lot of different offshoot variations of it. So what does an F45 workout look like? Like I said, it, it, I can't necessarily narrow it down because there's so many variations and they all have different names like Hollywood or Roman. But I mean, there's, there's tons of different ones and, you know, some are more cardio based, some are more strength training. But what you're looking at is um, I, I can throw some out here. So say if, if you've seen the gym, they, they look like an athletic training sort of center. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a big you know, AstroTurf field, like for, for sled pushes and there's kettlebells and there's boxes and, and all sorts of stuff. So typical workouts and exercises, you do stuff like rowing machines, you do bench hops, you know, where you're just, um, hands on the bench, jumping back and forth over, uh, there's, you're doing body weight exercises like mountain climbers, sometimes mountain climbers with pushups in them. You're doing lateral hops, you're doing burpees, you're doing um, box jump burpees. You're doing regular box jumps. You're doing step ups on a box where you're um, going with one leg and driving your other knee up. You're doing a lot of kettlebell work. There can be um, kettlebells where you're doing, um, you know, a, like a squat into an upright row. There's ones where you're doing like they call a suitcase row, um, barbell thrusters, a lot, like a lot of ab stuff. You could be doing medicine balls works, uh, you know, Russian twist where you're sitting on the ground going side to side with a medicine ball, um, you know, bent over rows, all sorts of stuff. So, you know, say in a normal day, you've got all these different stations and you got whatever 10 state, like there's so many variables here, but you know, on an average set, you'd be going, um, say you're doing like the bench hops, you would have, you'd be going 45 seconds of work with 15 seconds break just enough to catch your breath and then jump into it again. So you might do that. Uh, you might do three of those in a row before going on to the next exercise. Um, or you might be doing one um, set on like the bench hops and then going to the mountain climbers and then the kettlebells and then doing maybe like three laps of that. You know what I mean? With, you know, 45 seconds at the bench hops, wait 15, 
um, do the mountain climber f- climbers for 45, wait 15, go to the bench, hot, you know what I mean? So like all these different ways to do it. And then sometimes there'll be ones where you'll, it'll get up to like, you might be doing a minute of work, but there'll be like a longer rest period in between 30 seconds. Or someone will be like a 30 second work period with only 10 seconds um, rest. But then you're only doing say maybe two rounds of all those different exercises. And then one week it might be three rounds with those exercises. Like it's so many different things in variation, but remember how important that is. So that's like one of those things I was mentioning here that you can take and apply to your own workout. Even if you never step foot in, into an F45 gym is always create variation in your workout. Also, I think it is good to include uh, as many functional based movements as you can in your own workout if you're to never do an F45 session. So, I mean, keep your regular, you know, st- strength training is important. And I think always focusing on those big compound lifts, like um, if you're able to do them, like your squats and your bench presses, deadlifts, things that use a lot of muscle at once, that use a lot of coordination and build sort of, o- sort of overall strength, muscle and power. But throw in these functional movements, like throw in the mountain climbers. If you don't know those ones, it's where you're kind of, um, you know, on all fours and then you're driving your knees up towards your chest. And then it's like running on the ground. Uh, do the bench hops. You can do those anywhere. Grab the bench, um, feet together, gripping the side of the bench, and then, you know, jump up and to the left. Get your heels up as high as you can until you clear it. Land um, and keep, you know, bouncing back and forth. That Trust me, that's an awesome workout right there. Um, incorporate in those uh, box jumps if you can. It's like a good explosive movement in the power or in, in like for power muscle development coordination, um, even doing the step ups, but also like do the, you know, like I said, the Russian twist where you're sitting on the ground, feet in the air, keep your ankles crossed. You can do this even without weight, but if you have like, you know, a little medicine ball or something where you're twisting side to side, where you're just about like, you're picking up one thing, putting it onto the ground next to you back and forth. So incorporating all these things are going to apply and um, help you in your day-to-day life. So why is this type of training so effective for results, this high-intensity interval training? Well, it's essentially because it is a, uh, you're using different energy systems. You're u- it's, it's a higher calorie output. Your body has to um, exert itself more because like, as, you know, if you're doing a 45 second set with a 15 second rest time, it, it, it's it's enough to just put you into this high intensity interval phase, which is awesome for um, not only building like cardiovascular health, but muscular endurance. And there's better results. Like I, this, this is a whole show unto itself about HIIT training, which I very recommend you listen to that. I'll link in the show notes about HIIT based training. Um, and that it's more effective, even a 20 minute HIIT based workout is going to be a better calorie burner, uh, more positive, you know, hormone release in your body, like natural growth hormone, um, natural testosterone, as far as just um, vitality, longevity, uh, muscle building, body fat burning. So even just like a 20 minute a little session is going to be more effective than an hour of like a regular steady state cardio. Your body just responds, not, not that steady state cardio is bad it's obviously good for cardiovascular health like heart and lung health and everything like that but high intensity um, interval based stuff is just going to be more effective as far as if you're looking even just for like physical transformation like it's going to be more body fat burning more lean muscle you're going to look better but again it's like using these different energy systems it's going to help um better sort of hormone hormone balance and like um glucose tolerance your body's going to be more um it's not, it's not going to, it's going to lower like insulin resistance. Your body's going to be able to handle like sugars better. It's good for people who have those blood sugar issues or like diabetic issues as well as just dropping overall weight because your, your body has, um, it's engaged more, it's using more oxygen and it has as well what they call like an afterburn effect. When you do this high intensity style training, it's called EPOC. It's, um, excess post exercise oxygen consumption. Basically what that means is your body is burning calories long after the workout's done because you've used so much oxygen um, throughout the workout that your body um, has to replenish it and it it uses calories to sort of balance things out. And some of the research shows that this afterburn effect is lasting like up to 24 and, and some say even 36 hours 
after the workout is done, your body is still burning these calories. So it just puts everything into more of a better hormonal state, a more a better energy system use state. And it's ultimately going to get you fitter, um, improve your cardio, get you leaner, build more muscle, be, all the things people are looking to accomplish in the gym. And that's what you get with high intensity interval training. But honestly, if you can listen to that full episode, it's like, it's pretty long, but it, it has more in-depth info into all the science and research behind everything like that. And a lot of the main research on high intensity interval training actually comes out of Canada here, which is um, pr- <laughs> proud to promote. So if you go to regainwellness.com slash 164, that hit based work uh, episode will be linked up with all the other ones. So that's a takeaway as well here. If you're doing your own workouts for everything, incorporate these interval workouts, um, you know, one to three times a week. And they can be super simple. All it is is like, it doesn't have to be like crazy body functional training. You can just do it on a piece of cardio equipment. I like uh, stationary bikes. I think that's the best way to do it where you can control the resistance really quick. So what it would look like is just at the end of a workout or if it's just on its own day or whatever, go in. So you do like maybe a five minute warm up just to get the blood flow up, muscles loosened up. And then you're going to do, you're going to crank the intensity up. So say if you have a dial, save it just roughly goes from one to 10, 10 being like where you can barely move it. And one being no resistance. You're going to have it pretty cranked up to like a good seven or eight. And you're going to go basically all out. Assuming everything's okay. And you're healthy to be doing this, this style training, double check if that's potentially an issue or whatever um, with your physician, just always better be safe than sorry. So you're going to, really crank out a good 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds as hard as you can on this higher intensity, say like a seven or an eight. If we're just looking at a basic, um, kind of number, then you're going to dial it way back to like a two or three where you're going to keep pedaling, but you're going to, it's going to be a longer recovery period. So you're going to look, you know, maybe 90 seconds. Um, I wouldn't go too much under a minute. Like you really got to let these energy systems sort of recuperate to engage them properly to get all the good, results that you get from HIIT training, um, working out. So then you're going to repeat this at least, at least three to five times, maybe five to eight times. So, and then at the end, you're going to finish with like a five to 10 minute, um, really lighter pace cool down just to sort of wind yourself down. So the whole thing's not going to take you really more than 10 minutes, but you're going to get a huge amount of results more so than if you were to do just an hour straight on like a treadmill or a cross trainer. Like I said, you're going to engage all those uh, your muscles, you're going to improve your cardiovascular health. You're going to improve your, like your VO2 max, um, the better hormone levels, the body fat burning, the afterburn effect where you're continuing um, to, to burn calories, bone strengthening, the whole deal. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, I, I wouldn't, you know, recommend you even do this every day, just one to three times a week. Um, and you're going to get those good results. So I'll probably wrap it up here. I think that covers everything on something I just see as as really good and effective way of training and something that I use when I've worked um, in different gyms where I've run, I hate saying boot, group training. That's a better way to say it. I don't want to say boot camps. I'm just not a big fan of that word. So group training, these are, it's basically the stuff, it's been around for a long time. It's just people kind of package it together in this awesome way. And in the summers where I work, we run this style of training as well too, where it's um, station-based um, and circuits and not really dependent on weight because I work with a lot of young athletes and say you have a group of like 13 or 14 year olds, the fitness levels and strength vary huge between that whole group. You have kids that are like, you know, six foot already and look like they're in college and then other ones who can look like they're little kids. Um, so it, you can't go in and have, okay, everyone's going to do this weight and we're going to do 10 or 12 repetitions because it's just, it gets too complicated. It's too much to monitor. So instead we do these training circuits where it's more body weight based because then you can go at your own intensity. And that's why body weight and functional training can be really good. The weight weights are effective, but whenever you use your own body, it's good like that. And with the group training aspect, it's awesome. So, you know, if we will set up through the whole gym, uh, 15 or 20 stations and we'll do, you know, 45 seconds to a minute and then, you know, quick rest in between move to the next one. We try and get everyone through. So it can incorporate a lot of people 
all at once. And, you know, if you're doing, you know, if you ever is something you're doing and you want to design workouts or work with people, this body weight functional training works very well because then everyone can go at their own pace and no one's really left behind. So, you know, say we're doing, um, as a group and, and say just one of the things we're all going to do together and you're all doing just say like push ups as, as an example, instead of saying, let's do 12 of them. We go for times. We go for 30 seconds. That way, if you can crank out 130 seconds, you do that. If you can only do three, you do that. But you're still working in with your own parameters um, and still engaging yourself and pushing yourself because you're doing what you're capable of. But then everyone can work together to do it. So that's why this style of workout's effective and then in this environment and everything like that. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Uh, hopefully you like this. Yeah, check out... I'll sound like a broken record, regainwellness.com slash 164. And I'll have all those other episodes I've mentioned through that kind of follow up on this in a little more detail um, that I, I think you'll enjoy. And if you have enjoyed and you made it this long, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. If you want to check out some of my other stuff, you can go just to regular regainwellness.com. I've got a uh, free ebook for when you sign up to the newsletter. Um, for information, I'd basically just share over email. So that's regainwellness.com slash guide. And I've got some other books that I've released that have more nutrition info and fitness info and whatever you want to check out. So those are regainwellness.com slash book. Or if you even want to do like online coaching, I do a lot of uh, online nutrition coaching, which is more uh, in depth because it's, you know, because of like email and texting, you, you constantly be in touch. Um, it's not like just seeing a trainer once a week for an hour. It's it's more in depth and better contact and better communication. So if that's something you want to look, all that info's there, regainwellness.com. So thank you for listening. I'll see you soon.